D&D Beyond now fits in the palm of your hand with the free D&D Beyond app. It's the perfect tool set for beginners, regular players, and seasoned dungeon masters. Play faster with the guided character creator and access your character sheets, spells, and abilities wherever you go. All of your adventures and source books are at your fingertips, even when you're offline. Easily find and access the rules you need when you need them. With more features to come, download the free D&D Beyond app today. The mighty, the adorable, the hobby, Heron God. Uh, the second playable race from the Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Sam, first thoughts on our friends, the beautiful, the adorable Heron God. Truly, they weren't just cute like everybody supposes. Uh, there <laughs> is lovely Fey Wild mischief here. Uh, it, it is. Being able to play a Heron Gone is a thing I never knew that I wanted. Where with the fairy race, there's so much buildup and little pieces and like all sorts of hints and suggestions through Dungeon Master Guide and, and Monsters Manuals and illusions that we were going to get this. I didn't know we were going to get Bunny and I'm so happy that apparently we do. And they're great. Just be a bunny. <laughs> I tend to agree very much. And I loved, uh, once again, to call to our conversation last week with Chris Perkins. He was able to give us some insight on the development of these, uh, which I love very much. I believe uh, they, the designer Ari Levitch had a lot to do with bringing these into being in the form we know. Uh, but they were also inspired by just particularly cool art for a planned NPC in this adventure. And as the story goes, the demands among the playtesters and wizards staff once they met these folks that they wanted to play one, uh, which I choose to believe is the Herongon exerting its own fey influence on our plane to summon itself into existence. <laughs> no other explanation, but like also yeah. imagine arting so hard, there's a playable race now. Um, so, so props uh, to the artists. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons, End of Wild Land, The Witchlight. Just, it, I, I mean, and the, y'all, the book is beautiful. It's so gorgeous. Uh, so if you do choose to play as a Heron God, uh, in addition to the fact that you might meet some if you're playing through the Wild Beyond the Witch Light, like, you can also choose to be one. They are rabbit folk, essentially, who are fey in origin. Um, so their type is not uh, fey. Their type is humanoid. Um, fairies join Hexblood, Satyr, and Centaurs as the four non-humanoid playable races. Um, they are they are type fey. Um, the Herongon are type humanoid, but they have fey origins, which influences a lot of the abilities we're about to talk about. Uh, they originated in the Feywild, where they spoke Sylvan and embodied the spirit of freedom and travel. In time, these rabbit folk hopped into other worlds, bringing the fey realm's exuberance with them and learning new languages as they went. Uh, they are bipedal. Uh, bipedal. I. How is that word said? Uh, bipedal. Usually, like, like when I'm talking about uh, how bipedalism is a fool's game, and the okay. only way to win is not to play. Bipedal. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I knew you would know, uh, because that phrase <laughs> was in my head all the time. Uh, they have characteristic long feet of the rabbits they resemble and fur in a variety of colors. They share the keen senses and powerful legs of leperine creatures and are full of energy like a wound up spring. Herringons are blessed <laughs> with a little fey luck and they often find themselves a few fortunate feet away from dangers during adventures. And here's how you do that with the rules of the game. Uh, you are a humanoid, you can choose medium or small, which I thought was very cool. You can be fully like, I'm Peter Rabbit, let's do this. Or you can be full anthropomorphic human looking rabbit person. It gives us lots of good concepts to work with and to hone the particulars. I love being able to choose size. It's such a nice detail. Uh, and so if you want to be big, tough, swole bun, you could. <laughs> I, also, I've if you a have a fairy people... buddy, you can get enlarged and be extremely large swole bun. So big. <laughs> I love that. Uh, for some reason, I'm seeing a lot of people who are excited to run Herringon Barbarians. Uh, I think that sounds way fun um 
But uh, both, the... both would be so good. You can have such a good fairy barbarian. Like, both of these are great. And again, this goes back to, like, all of the versatility. There are so many fun concepts that work with both of these races that every idea sounds good right now. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Size, medium or small, speed, 30 feet. Uh, you get several traits in this case. Uh, trading out that fake characteristic for a few more sort of named things here. Um, you get hair trigger. Which I would just, a special note to the naming. The naming conventions are so on point. First of all, hair and gone. Hair and gone. Hairs, rabbits. It's, it's so good. It's so much. I love it so much. Uh, at first, when, when the Arnoth Arcana was called Rabbit Folk, and that was totally fine with me and sounded adorable. Uh, but immediately once I heard the actual name was going to be Hair and Gone, and there is a pronunciation guide in the front of the book for that, just so we don't all have to stumble over ourselves. Um, uh, yeah, I love it, and well done to the, the, uh, the writers on this one. We've assimilated um, puns into Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> We're ta we've taken over. Look at that. Hair Trigger. Perfect. Hair Trigger will let you add your proficiency to your initiative rolls, which is tremendously cool and probably stacks in some dangerous ways <laughs> there are a lot of classes that will let you add your ability score to your initiative rolls that yes this will stack with very nicely uh this is just a very solid ability for any caster in the world uh because not everyone has spell sculpting or wants to spend sorcery points working around the fighter who charged in before we cast our fireballs. Sometimes it's nice to go right at the top and just lob something in willy-nilly or, you know, lob in fairy fire if you have access to that. Likewise, it's great if you can help your friends hit harder before they even hit in the first round. Uh, there are a lot of very good reasons to want to go at the top of the order, as well as some classes like assassin rogues who benefit from being very high in the order, as again was pointed out in the sneak preview for this race. I love that. Uh, and not only are you a little quicker on the uptake in a fight, but you are a little more alert in general because you have leperine senses, which gives you proficiency in perception. Uh, which I love very much because I pretty much always try to find a way to take proficiency in perception. I, that's my like personal if if it's an if it's on the menu, I snag it kind of deal. Uh, just a tr generally helpful. Every time I don't, no one else did either. It's just this collective <laughs> action problem. And then uh, the one time I felt no one had. Okay, cool, we're fine, we're fine. Uh, no, we don't notice anything. Which nope. isn't a bad choice, don't get me wrong. It's lovely to not know what's coming. Uh, but in practice, perception is one of the most powerful skills in the game in terms of what, how often it is called. A lot of us like to pick it up. And so just having access to it, again, makes room for us to focus backgrounds and classes on other aspects of our character concept because we don't, feel compelled to grab it in some way we are we don't have to grab it we're a rabbit <laughs> well done i didn't know it was so, happening and then it was <laughs> i love it uh you get a little bit of touch a little touch of that fey luck which i love here lucky footwork when you fail a dexterity saving throw you can use your reaction to roll a d4 and add it to the save which could turn a failure into a success um, you can't use it if you're prone or if you uh, have a speed of zero, which makes sense. Nowhere to go. Um, but uh, I, I will definitely be looking to use that one. And it pairs nicely with this next one, which is rabbit hop. As a bonus action, you can jump a number of feet equal to five times your proficiency bonus without provoking opportunity attacks. Uh, again, can't use it if your speed is zero, um, and you get a limited number of uses on that one per long rest. Uh, so this is an updated version of what we saw in the Unearthed Arcana, 
Um, the hopping in that I don't think had disengaged properties, uh, but it had an amount that needed to be rolled for. Whereas this one still has one that it, this case will scale with you as you grow um, and requires a dedicated bonus action, um, which I think makes a lot of sense <laughs> for putting this into play. Uh, but Sam, thoughts on Lucky Footwork and Rabbit Hop? Yes, um, both are great escaping the consequences of your actions which is great if we, you tend to build up a lot of consequences. Uh, and in fact, that's reflective of pretty much every ability. Getting the drop on whatever's going around you, having the spidey sense to know that something is about to pop up on you, hop, hopping away when uh, something's about to come at your face and you have to make a deck save, and getting out of some kind of mess that you are in. Uh, it is all of these abilities work as a thematic whole for what this character does, which is get in, get out, get out. Um, hair and anyone gone. Anyone benefits. Hair and gone. Everyone benefits from dexterity saves that may just not have made it. Even if you have dex save proficiency, there's always that one time. And having a little reaction ability, meaning that you can, it recharges every turn, like you get it every uh, every round, is invaluable for just those sometimes you're going to need it. It's a little quality of life thing. And Rabbit Hop, as you note, uh, has evolved within jumping abilities in the game and even from its Unearthed Arcana. Satyrs uh, have Mirthful Leap and that works much like I think the Unearthed Arcana did, where you roll a d8 and you can add the result of that d8 to your long or standing jump. This not only gives you, eventually you will leap very notably, very, very notably far. You go very, very far. Um, but having the disengage is great if you are a squishy and the enemy dived into the back line where they don't belong. Uh, it's great if you, di you didn't want to be in melee and you ended up in it. It's great <laughs> if you have been in melee and now you want to be in melee with something else. Or even if you just, your friend goes down halfway across the battlefield and you're the one with the potion or the healing word. And or uh, I suppose the just need to get in range for a good touch spell. Any of those things can be a good reason and to have access to a bonus action disengage is just handy for anyone and everyone. Bringing us back to the, the headline of these new racial options. This works well for pretty much everyone. You could put this <laughs> on any class and all of these abilities are great. So let's try it uh, by this time, perhaps slightly more smoothly going to the character <laughs> creation. I won't bork my own login as we're doing it, uh, ideally. Um, but we will go ahead and I'm gonna, yeah, nice. I like it. Uh, take a look at our Paragon options. Once again, this is the note that's going to remind you that the structure of this in our character builder has changed slightly to better reflect the way it's set up. Um, you can, of course, click through to the details page. Uh, choose. You are adorable. That's canon. Uh, do you want to be medium or small? Ooh, let's be small. Yeah, let's do it. Poor little bunny. I'm a fan. Uh, it works for me. <laughs> uh and okay so i had pitched potentially when we were talking about what we might do today uh rolling up stats to to lean into some of the randomness and then choosing a class but do you have a specific thing in mind that you already want to build i want to leave this open uh i am happy with both of those options uh I think some of the coolest things you can do here is take advantage of those rabbit hops uh, for melee fighters. Um, so things like paladins are really great options here. Uh, but since we went with a specific class for our fairy, let's roll. Let's roll a die. And we might just ignore the results. 
<laughs> Heck yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. So let's see. We uh, we can roll for our stats right here, which is tremendously fun to do. Oh, this is my first time seeing this because I never roll stats. I love it very much. Ooh, this models down. the real way you would do it, which is to roll 4d6, pick the top three and drop the other. But made very easy. Oh, two ones. No fun. Okay, we're getting a lot okay. of mid-range today. There we go. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Woo! Okay, all right. We are average. We are average we with are room for growth. Extremely average as a start. You know what? I like to think that our, our bun is a bun of the people. Uh, it's going to come from humble origins. Uh, and and no, maybe no, have us. a chip on no, no, their us. little <laughs> maybe a chip on their little bun shoulder about proving themselves, uh, and which yeah. they can then do over time. Uh, yeah. Where do we Great. want? Mm. We can choose where we put these, uh, or we can assign them like at random. Do you want to do them straight across, or? Ooh, that is the old school uh, basic uh, D and D basic D and D advanced way of it. Uh, Hear me out. I okay. think these stats work very well on a fighter. Okay. Because the notable thing for fighters is that they get a ton of ability score increases. So we have some nice strength, some nice constitution. We're going to be leaping in and out of uh, combat with things. Having average other stats is totally cool. We don't have to be good at everything. We have to be good at hitting and getting hit. And we get our one delightful flavor stat. Where do What's you want to put flavor stat going to be? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Because that, that stat's who we are. It, it's absolutely. It's the most important stat in the game. Do we want to be uh, clumsy, socially awkward, or a little bit uh, maybe on the foolish side? See, this is my problem. I'm going to say yes. <laughs> uh, personally, I really like a charisma dump because it is flavor. Like, yep. there are so many ways to not be good at people. You can be a very loud not good at people. You can be a very shy not good at people. You can kind of have some bun inflected. Like, maybe you're very skittish when there's someone kind of intimidating uh even though you're a fighter and you get to just like play these juxtapositions in fun ways uh my favorite thing about dumping either intelligence wisdom or charisma is that all of them give you lots of really really rewarding role play and for me dumping charisma is my personal favorite <laughs> i love it all right i have sort of randomly decided between dex int and wisdom uh Perfect. let's go ahead and apply those which means of course that we can do our custom ability score increases now what would you yes. like us to bump up as our first level harangan fighter uh i think we can lean into our our strength and our constitution a little bit more be yeah. more school be more <laughs> tough fun <laughs> little uh bump up there and you can see how it's all reflected there so that our totals are going to be 7 10 10 11 14 and 15. that minus two charisma modifier is going to be so much fun <laughs> <laughs> it, it very much will uh let's see okay and languages are free choice for this one what do you want to say? Who raised us that made us unable to to feel confident in regular conversations? Ooh, uh, I just my my knee jerk instinct is we were raised by goblins. We are also small. We are also very ferocious. We are very mighty, and maybe the other big ones don't appreciate us properly. Maybe that's our grit. We are powerful, mighty goblins. I, I love this very much. I'm getting very attached. Uh, so as our first level fighter, we get to nab a fighting style. Uh, what shall we add for our combative yet skittish 
<laughs> Goblin raised herring gun. Ooh, let me see the options again for fighting style. We get our options at first level here are going to be archery, blind fighting, yes. defense, dueling, great weapon fighting, interception, protection, one of my faves, superior technique, thrown weapon fighting, two weapon fighting, and unarmed fighting. I kind of like unarmed, Ooh. like, get you with my bare feet. Right. Little little bunny. I mean, Ash, that's a great flavoring of unarmed strikes, right? Just kangaroo boxing, but as a small bun? Yes! Yes! We're unarmed. All right. Because uh, we're not fighting with like... our arms, we're fighting with our feet. <laughs> <laughs> and we get a couple of fighter skills to throw in there. We get acrobatics, animal handling, athletics, history, insight, intimidation, or survival. Ooh, we should absolutely take athletics, uh, because that's the jumping stat. (laughs) Fair point. Uh, (laughs) And then you want to say survival as our backup there? However, we got from goblin childhood to current, probably picked up a little bit of knowledge along the way. We are very tough and uh, (laughs) hair-scrabble. Hair-scrabble is Uh, I gotta say, I am a big fan. Let's see. I think we can skip forward now that we've made our major choices, um, and pick ourselves out a portrait. Hmm. Oh, we got to load those hair and gun in. All right. And we're going to hold off on the portrait for now. Hmm. Uh, but we can do a, a little decorate on the sheet just before we settle it completely. Mm. and pick i mean oh. how about uh wrong screen resolution you can still see i'm gonna pick one that shows a little better without resizing my window before i break everything again mm. perfect i let's go with gosh there's so many gorgeous ones Ooh, this is I, one I of the, the settings that you can uh, oh. access in, in the Wild Beyond the Witchlight on your adventure. And I love the way it plays for us uh, on this particular character. Perfect. Oh my gosh, we have a color scheme for our bun now. <gasps> Do No! The flames <laughs> have what? <laughs> Bunny ears? perhaps excellent oh Uh, well it is possible to win dungeons and dragons (laughs) there we are these are some of the the things that came as creator bonuses with wild the the witch light so i hope you will enjoy playing with these if you nabbed these um but i think let's see i will say kind of a Mm. deeper the fey wine i think is gonna pair well uh with with our with our current sheet setup. And with all that in place, I think our our bun bun is is here to go. Our goblin raced, I will fight you, Heron gone. Sam, what else would you like to do with, like, what are you looking forward to seeing if you get to roll up a Heron gone at a table or if you have further thoughts on how we would play, Yanae? So happy to hear them. Mm. Uh, I think one of the cool things about the the cool potential here is the potential for collaboration between our fairies, between our herring cons. I think they would have a really fun time together. I think there should be piggybacking. Um, I think that jumping everywhere and being everywhere at once, like again, the movement abilities are so good and so fun. And jumping in on everything, knowing what's about to happen and narrating the movements of ears because as we know with heron guns uh, all the body language all the hair it, it, it's in the ears it's like it's like an antenna moods ears feelings awareness reactions there. i'm going to be narrating my ears as a bunny till the end of time which is a great idea and also something if you're playing a fairy a great idea is to narrate Again, what do your specific wings look like? What does it look like when you move? What does your fairy fire look like? And how does it make it different? Um, and how does your heron gun uh, move around? Is it more of the sprightly energy? Are you sort of a, a grumpy, like, 
you didn't even like it the second you look away your heron guns in a different place or are you very in your face about jumping around because i feel like both of those uh are very valid like every time you turn around the heron gun is there or i'm doing a big splashy leap right in front of you two different ways to do it super bunny landing just <laughs> into the middle <laughs> perfect <laughs> Finally, we had uh, at least one great question come in so far. And this was actually, I think, came in before we made our fairy monk. So well done, Key Squared, for predicting this. But if you were DMing and had a fairy monk, would you let this fairy's tiny unicorn horn count as a monk unarmed attack? And would it tickle? I mean, let's answer the latter question first. Yes, of course it tickles. Absolutely. Uh, it, it's, it's a little bit of that, uh, leg waking up feeling, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. on an unarmed strike, just a little bit of a paresthesia. Uh, but yes, one of the, one of the most important things about all of these options is that we are given mechanics to play with and we have characters to express them through flavor. There is nothing in the rules that says a dog can't play basketball, and there's nothing in the rules that says that your unarmed strike can't be with something other than your fist. If you are a bunny doing kangaroo kicks, or if you are a fairy doing headbutts with your tiny spectral horn, the game mechanic cares about the size of the die, but the magic of a role-playing game is in how those dice meet our imagination perfectly put i hope people will hop in oh that i didn't even mean that i'm sorry please make herringon i'm very excited make more rabbit puns send them to me uh you can grab them by themselves or the fairy by themselves or everything all together in the wild beyond the witch light on dndbeyond.com right now i can't wait to see people rolling these up at, at their own tables and please let us know what kinds of characters you are making with these and Sam, thank you so much again for joining me on stream today. Where can the people find you and your adventures? Well, if they have a Herangon-esque proficiency in perception, they can find me as a role-playing performer and variety streamer throughout the Twitcher net, my schedule for which is on twitch.tv slash delevely, D-E-L-E-V-E-L-Y. Everything else I've got going on, you can find on my Twitter at Tchaikovsky, C-H-A-I-K-O-V-S-K-Y. And I don't know if you can catch me doing it, but I am always out there being a fan of Amy Dallin. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. <laughs> uh, I love having you here. This was so much fun. Thank you all for watching today. We are all very excited to see all the good stuff happening at D&D Celebration this weekend. So I will probably see you, some of y'all in chat for those. I am on a panel on Saturday led by the wonderful Jim Zub, which is gonna talk about getting kids and teens into D&D with an all-star roster of educators and librarians and incredibly cool people. Uh, and we're going to talk all about that, which is one of my favorite subjects on Saturday morning. But we will also see you here, of course, next week for next time on D&D Beyond. Thanks so much. It's D &D.